Now if we're dividing by something larger than a monomial, what happens? So when dividing polynomials by polynomials, it involves long division, just like what you did with arithmetic. If you have a really long number, like 30,000, dividing it by 50, you can do the long hand and see how you get there. So we're going to go back to that, but now with polynomials. So the first example, we want to divide x squared plus 5x plus 6 by x plus 2. So we're dividing trinomial by a binomial. So we always take the first one, it goes on the inside of our long division line. And what we're dividing by goes on the outside. So the first question that we want to ask, what do I need to multiply x by to get me to x squared? So I need to multiply by an x, and we write it above the matching term below it. So I had an x down here, I wrote the x factor above it. So now we take that and multiply it to each of these terms and write them below. So x times x will give me x squared, and x times a positive 2 will give me positive 2x. So we write those below under their respective factors and we subtract that whole entire quantity from what's above. So what do we get out? x squared minus x squared. Those are gone. That was the whole purpose. And 5x minus 2x. We're left with 3x. Once we've done that, we want to bring down what's next, plus 6 on the back and ask the same question, but now down here. What do I need to multiply x by to get me to 3x? What do I need to multiply this by to get me here? By 3. And again, write it above the constants. Make sure everything should have the same variable in a column. Same variable. So we do the same. Take this, multiply it to each, and write it below. So 3 times x will give me 3x, and 3 times positive 2 will give me positive 6. And again, I'm subtracting that entire quantity off. So we'll see what we're left with. 3x minus 3x. That's going to be gone. 6 minus 6. Also going to be gone. So we had a remainder of 0 down there. So we can always check, check with the multiplication. If I take x plus 2, what I was dividing by, and multiply it by what I got out, do we really get the thing in the beginning? So let's boil and see. First, x squared. Outer 3x and an inner 2x will give me 5 altogether. Getting there. And last, plus 6. So yeah, we did the division correctly. Right. Sometimes we might not have a remainder down here. If we hit a zero, we know that we're done. And we'll look at another case where it's not going to be zero. So I want to divide x squared plus 2x minus 12 by x minus 3. So first one goes on the inside. What I'm dividing by goes on the outside. And we have to ask that question. What do I need to multiply x by to get me here by a factor of x? And we line up all of the same variables together. Take that to each of these terms and write it below. So x times x will give me x squared. x times a negative 3 minus 3x. Lining up similar variables. And we're subtracting an entire quantity. What do we get out? So x squared minus x squared is going to be gone. And I've got 2x minus a minus 3. So 2x plus 3x will give me 5 together. And we pull down the next term. Always have the same variables in a column. And we have to ask the question, what do I need to multiply x by to get me here. 
by 5. Same pattern. Take this term times each of these, write them below. So 5 times x gives me 5x. Five, 5 times negative 3, negative 15. And we're subtracting off that entire quantity. So let's see what we're left with. 5x minus 5x, gone. Negative 12 minus negative 15. Negative 12 minus a minus. So I've got negative 12 plus 15 will give me 3 left over. So when do we stop? Let's just look and see. There's nothing else to bring down. What do I have to multiply x by to get me 3? I'm mixing apples and oranges there. So we have a remainder 3 that's left over. So what do we do with that? So the 3 is the only piece that hasn't been divided by x minus 3 yet. So when we write our complete answer at the end, this was the whole part that we got out. But what's left over? 3, and he still needed to be divided by x minus 3. Since he hasn't been divided yet, we need to write that remainder as such. So in the end, that's our answer. x plus 5 plus 3 over x minus 3. But how do we check that funny case? Okay. So we behave the same, but the remainder on the end, we're just adding at the end. So if I multiply what I was dividing by times the whole part that I got out, and my little remainder on the end, if I add him, do I get back to the original thing on the inside? So let's see. First, I'll have x squared, outer 5x, inner minus 3x, last minus 15, and my remainder was 3. So what are we looking at? x squared, got the first term. I've got two x's, got the second one, and minus 12, got the third. Checked it. So whenever we have a remainder at the end, we still need to write it over what we were dividing by, because 3 hadn't been divided by that thing yet. So when dividing, we may have a remainder of 0, as in our first example. So if it is 0, we stop. We know that we're done. If a remainder is not 0, we have to continue dividing until the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. So the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor, or the thing that we're dividing by. So in the last example, what was the degree of our remainder? My remainder was 3. And what is its degree? Degree 0. And the divisor of that problem, the thing we were dividing by, was x minus 3. And the degree of that polynomial was what? Degree 1. So our remainder had a lower degree, so we knew to stop right there. So if you come across those examples, remainder other than zero, we stop when its degree is lower than our divisor. So go ahead and take those next two examples, divide, and check if you so desire that long division. So the first one, set up. First thing goes on the inside, what we're dividing by on the outside. First question. What do we need to multiply x by to get us here? x, take that times each of them, writing it below. So we get x squared minus 2x. We're subtracting that entire quantity. So the x squareds are going to be gone. And I've got 2x minus a minus. So 2x plus 2x will give me 4x. We bring down what's next. And we have to ask again, what times x will get me here? Multiplying by 4. So 4 times x gives me 4x. 4 times negative 2, negative 8. So when we look at subtracting that entire quantity, everything is going to be gone. So remainder 0 tells us to stop. 
So that division coming out, x plus 4. If you check it, is it true that x plus 4 times x minus 2 is really equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8? It is. We always have those checks to fall back on. For the second one, again, first thing goes on the inside, what we're dividing by on the outside. What do we need to multiply x by to get us to x squared? x, so we take that times each of these, and I get x squared plus 3x. We're looking at the difference, so the x squareds are going to be gone. How many x's am I going to have? 4, and we bring down what's next. So we got to ask, what times x will give me 4x plus 4? 4 times x gives me 4x. 4 times 3 gives me 12. Subtracting off that entire quantity, 4x's are going to be gone, and I'm looking at 10 minus 12, negative 2. And do we stop there? My degree of my remainder is 0 degree of the divisor is 1, so we stop. So to finish off, I've got negative 2, and it still needs to be divided by x plus 3. And we can check. My whole part that I was dividing and the whole part of what we got out, if I subtract off my remainder, is it equal to x squared plus 7x plus 10? It is.